guys, Sheon Kelly here, and today I'm going to be talking about something that I've been meaning to for a long time. I've just never gotten around to it. I've always been too nervous to make this video, uh, even though I've tried making it several times. So we're going to see how this goes. As you can probably tell by the title, uh, this is dedicated to one of my absolute favourite YouTubers, Jacksepticeye, and this is going to be um, my story uh, that is quite personal and every time I try to tell people about it, it's always really hard for me to because... Okay, I should back up. <laughs> this is going to be a very serious video for me at least. Um, so if you don't want to see that, there'll be a link of funny video down in the description. How's that sound? So I'm the type of person that doesn't really open up much. And a lot of my friends who will probably see this will probably be like, nah, we can read you like an open book. But, and that's true for certain people and for most things. But for a long time in the past year, well, not this year, but last year, I had a secret and I was hiding it for quite a long time. Now, don't for a second, just just don't go off at me in the comments for this because I know I wasn't clinically diagnosed. I know I, w I never went to a doctor about this. Roll with me on this, all right? So last year... I entered a very difficult phase of my life that was slowly but surely going more and more downhill and it was quite hard for me to do certain things. Again, it's all, it's so nerve-wracking for me to tell you guys this because it's it's so personal to me and I've only told a few people about this like ever. Basically, what it is, is that, <sighs> okay, let's start with Jack. Let's start with Sean. So I found Sean uh, last year, no, year before last year, it was at the end of the year, and it was the Five Nights at Freddy's craze, and I was thinking, oh great, I can see another YouTuber play Five Nights at Freddy's, and I found this crazy guy who was Irish, and he was shouting at everything, and he was going, and I was thinking, Jesus Christ, who so much swearing. Um, there was so much swearing everywhere. But the more I got to know about this person, the more I started to realise he's not just an over-the-top loud idiot, which is what originally attracted me to his channel. He was much more sentimental than that. He cared about his audience. He was much more sentimental and he cared about his audience. He truly wanted to interact with us and he was very humble and he was, he put in so much effort and so much hard work into everything he did and I found myself clicking that subscribe button and just, ah, oh, ever since it's been the wildest ride and I'm so happy constantly every time I watch his videos. They're wild, they're wacky, they're crazy. Go subscribe. <laughs> but the reason I point this out is Jack made a video which went for about an hour, I think. And I watched it at the end of... It was sometime in January, I know that, of last year. And uh, the year before, I'd gone through a few hardships. Most people do. Um, and I've forgotten what the game was called. I, I really have, and it's terrible. What, but basically what happened was, it's a game where you're trapped in a room for an hour, and you get these little notes through the door from different people. From, like, there's a, there's a woman in the shop, and she's like, oh, hi, let's, let's escape this compound together. And then there's this guy who you apparently were friends with, and he's, you know, trying to travel there saying, oh yeah, let's break you out of there, we'll go somewhere. And, but then there's this other guy who is trying so hard to please you and he's trying so hard to make you happy. 
to like get you games and stuff. You had this little like gaming pad and you play Snake and stuff on it to pass the time. It, it was a very strange game and I basically, I had it on in the background, like I was kind of working on an art project then, I was working on a canvas and basically what happened was is it got to the end. For anyone who hasn't seen the end of that game, spoiler warning, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. So for those of you who don't actually care or if you just don't think you'll play that game or you've already seen it, the end of that game uh, all these people you were talking to through notes, they all die. Basically what happened is you get out at a certain time and if you had been just that little bit quicker, you could have saved one of the people from dying. She commits suicide and, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm trying not to cry. Um, but it's that thing, if you had been just a little bit quicker, you could have saved her, but you just you didn't, you couldn't. Now, that game was already hitting me in the feels because, well, earlier in the previous year, like I said, shit had gone down, stuff was going on, and this was very personal for me to hear. Um, Jack basically went on saying you shouldn't, um, you know, you shouldn't think about suicide, and if you're having bad thoughts, you need to talk to someone. Um, which I completely agree with. But then, you know, he was going on and on about it, and it made me think about the stuff that had happened in the previous year. So basically what had happened was that one of my oldest friends, who I knew quite well, she, the previous year, had been diagnosed with cancer. Um, I've forgotten what type of cancer it was. I know, I'm a terrible friend. But then she... She passed away. And, you know, I got to school. Everything seemed fine and dandy. It was a really bright, sunny day. I thought, right, this day is going to be really great. Walked into the classroom. And I said the stupidest thing... Ever. Because I didn't know. And I said, Why is this room so silent? You act like somebody's died. <laughs> and looking back on it now, I just feel so stupid. I know I didn't know about it. And I know, I know I couldn't have known. <laughs> but. <laughs> was the stupidest thing I could have ever said. Especially in that situation. Anyway, as the day went on, you know, people around me, they were all crying and I was determined not to cry. I was determined I was going to stay strong. And, you know, most of my friends at the time, they didn't even know that I was friends with her, so they were just brushing it off and they were going, oh, you know, it's very sad, but we weren't that close to her. We all basically skipped classes for the first lesson that day. And I just remember thinking, I have to be away from my friends right now. I can't do this. And usually you'd think during that situation, you want your friends to be around you, to comfort you, but I've grown up a life where... I don't like to rely on people. I don't, I don't know how to have people comfort me. It's, it's something that, you know, I always struggle with. So that happened, but this wouldn't be a good story. Something else didn't go along with it. I was walking home, this was about three days after, I was not okay. I was not alright. I just, I had turned myself off emotion wise. I fake smiled. I had to go to work like literally the day after. I had to be bright and happy and smiling for, you know, for my workplace. So I, I turned myself off emotionally. And then I was walking home with a friend who has a lot of troubles and I'm not going to deny that which I try to help 
them with all the time. And they basically stopped me when we were walking right before they went into their house. And they said, I tried to take my own life on the weekend. I tried to kill myself on the weekend and I didn't even know how to respond. The first thing I thought was, why? Why would you do that? But why would you do something like that? I don't get it. This is a really hard topic for me. <laughs> Clearly. But the next thing I thought, I was so angry at them. Going, no, you can't do that. You cannot do that. You're not allowed to do that. And I know that's so selfish. I know, I know that that is such a selfish thing for me to think. But I just did. And I felt terrible afterwards. I came home and just didn't know what to do. Anyway, after that whole ordeal happened, time went on. Slowly but surely I got better. I got stronger. And... You know, watching Jack's videos made everything better. I know, I rarely talk about Jack, even though this is for Jack. This is my personal story to him. Uh, even though, because this is probably because I will never meet him in real life. Even if he comes to Australia, he'll probably go to Queensland or to Sydney or whatever places where I am not. <laughs> so I'm really bad. Because Jack is my hero. He is, you know, he's my hero not because he's so funny or not because he's really awesome or something like that. I mean, guaranteed he is those things. But he's my hero because he's human. And he makes mistakes. And he, he feels emotions. And because he is honest with us and just because he is him that's why he's my hero because he has the power to make people smile regardless of what they're going through which is why when i was going through my depression i tried to watch one of his videos per day and this happened last year and so basically what was happening was was my whole friendship group they were all fighting and at the time I was stuck in between two groups and I didn't know which group to go with and I if you know me in real life you'll know that I am not one for arguments if there is an argument going on I will try to be the one who compromises everything like try to be the one to make a compromise I will not pick one side unless I know all the information so that was going on and it got to a point where, you know, I, I had a lot of stuff going through my head that shouldn't have been going through my head. Like, you know, you're not worth anything, your friends don't care about you, you know, you're going, because you're not worth anything, you're going to lose them soon and all that sort of stuff. And I, I remember I had this terrifying daydream one day where I was coming home from, I think it was the water the water diviner, the water diviner, which was brilliant. Um, but I remember coming home and I had this daydream where I, I go more into, into this on my DeviantArt, um, where all my friends basically left me for no good reason. And I was just left wondering why I was left wondering why they had done that to me. And you know, nothing like that has ever happened in my real life, like ever. Like my friends were fighting Shaw and you know, the, our group, which was a bit of about 13 people got split. But I still see every single one of those friends. None of them has stopped talking to me ever. But I realized that day I was so terrified of losing the people that I hold dear that I started to think really negatively about myself. And I don't do that anymore. Like, I have off days, everyone does, but I don't do that anymore because I feel like it's bad for me. And I would spend nights just looking in the mirror going, you know, you're ugly, you're fat, you're unintelligent, you 
cannot keep your friends with you because you are not worth anything. And that's not a very good mindset to be in, especially as I was entering BCE, which is like one of the last years of, you know, my schooling. And well, there were, there were ups and downs. Like I remember there was a point in time where I would come home every day and after, after faking it for a whole day and I would have an anxiety attack, like probably one per day. And it would, I don't, it was an anxiety attack from what I, from what I understand, it was an anxiety attack because I would come home and just lie on the floor and just start crying for no given reason. I don't know why I would always feel sad. I would always feel terrible. I would get these bad headaches and I would get these bad stomach aches as well at school. If something wasn't going right, I'd get this ter these terrible stomach aches, which I didn't want, I didn't want to leave school. So I just sort of had to grin and bear with it. And that's not something you should do. <laughs> but I think the only thing that got me through that time um, and I'm not going to say how long it was because it's a lot longer than I care to admit. Because I I like to think of myself as a fairly positive person. Like I, I try to be positive for the people around me. Um, and I eventually snapped out of it and went, ah, no, don't do this. <laughs> but I was in that state for the longest time and the one person who pulled me through it day after day was Sean. And another reason why he's my hero is because he looks into the camera and it is as if he is looking at you. Like like how I'm sort of doing to you now. It's like I'm talking to you, right? He would make reading comments videos and all that sort of stuff. And every time I watched a video, he would say something to either make me smile or it was something I needed to hear. So, for example, I'm not the thinnest person ever. I consider myself slightly fat. And I'm fine with that now. But back then I didn't think of I was. And what did he say? He said, he said something along the lines of, if you don't like yourself, then change yourself for the better. Something along those lines. But he said, you are actually beautiful no matter, no matter what. No matter who you are, no matter what size you are, no matter how tall you are, short you are, fat, thin, whatever. No matter what gender you are, you are beautiful for who you are. And that was something I needed to hear. So, after, after I've gone through my whole story, I just, this is so long and I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to cut this down to 15 minutes if I can. But on the off chance... Sean might actually be watching this and it would literally be my dream come true if he did watch this and like left a comment or something that would be my absolute dream come true but I doubt he'll he's ever gonna see this because YouTube is a big place and I'm but a tiny channel on here and I doubt this is ever gonna reach him but if it does if it does, Sean, if you're there, hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for being one of the only people there for me when I was going through my darkest times. Thank you for making me smile. Thank you for making me laugh. Thank you for letting me feel happy again. Thank you for telling me what I needed to hear. Thank you so much for being a part of my life and for being a part of everyone's lives. Every single subscriber who has subscribed to you, they see you for who you are and we love you. I love you too. Just as much. Probably more. And I really wish one day I will be able to meet you. To give you all the hugs, to give you all the hugs, to give you drawings, to make you cake, cookies, like they might be slightly burnt because I can't cook, but it would be my dream to meet you. Not even for that long, it wouldn't have to be for that long, but that is my dream. So thank you, Sean, Jack, 
septic eye Sam. I just, I felt like making this video because I felt it was about time that I made another talk talk video. And this seemed like a good topic to talk about. I've actually had this video planned at the back of my mind for the past like year, well not year, for the past month. And I haven't really known when to talk about it, if I could talk about it. Usually when I'd talk about it, it'd go on for about an hour. I recorded myself then and I was like, okay, I need to cut out this, do this. But hopefully now I've got it at a reasonable length. But if not, I'm gonna, I've probably cut this down into two parts because YouTube won't let me upload more than 15 minutes. Um, sorry, I got so emotional. Um, like I said, it's a very personal topic for me. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked this video for some odd reason, you can leave a like down below. Leave a comment on... I don't know. If you have any suggestions for what you want me to talk about in the next, in the next video, or if you want me to cover a song, leave it down below. You can subscribe if you want to see more of my stuff. And you know what? I will see you next time.